I am Dr. Thomas Clements. That's right, an actual scientist. Do we have any other PhD trained scientists in the audience tonight? We have PhDs, but not scientists. My parents are here. <laughs> demonstrably worse at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I agree. But to, <laughs> to get things started, we got a warm-up game to y'all, and I'm going to pass you my favorite least science friend, Sam. Okay. <laughs> but we have been arguing a lot with Tom about who's the smartest person on the team, and I don't think it's him, so we're going to have to figure make and prove it by playing a game called Categories. The way this is going to work is I will come to you for a category, something like colors, types of shoes, like that, I will point to one of my performers, they will say something in that category, but if they say something incorrect, something I don't like, if they take too long, they just upset me in general, they will put one hand up. If they make that blunder a second time, they will put both hands up, and then they are clap, clap, out of here. And we really want to make them feel bad, so can we all do that at the same time? So if Tom is too, Tom is out of here. Wonderful. Can I get my first category? Countries of the world. Countries of the world. United States of America. Germany. North Macedonia. <laughs> China. France. Spain. Mexico. Italy. Brazil. Croatia. Vector. Portugal. Um, and... No! <laughs> That's one strike for living. Another category. Furniture. <laughs> Furniture. Whatever that means to you. Furniture. <laughs> Couch. Lunch. Ottoman.
amino acids? Oh. <laughs> 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 Cue press. 
I would say hug your inner thighs in towards each other. Hug is another force cue. I would tell her to pull the belly button in towards her spine. Pull is the force cue there. And then she's pressing her shoulder blades back behind her. Press would be another force cue. And then finally, reach the crown of your head towards the sky. So those are all four cues from Newton's first law that give you an equal standing posture. If you look in a biology textbook, I haven't in a while, but the skeleton looks like this because this is how we were actually intended to stand. Um, so that's Newton's first law in Tadasana. The second law says that the net force on an object, I look at it like I need to. Um, <laughs> not a good move on my part. Um, the second law says that the net force on an object, the sum of all the forces that are acting, is equal to the mass times the acceleration of that object. Um, so for the second one, get into down dog, if you would. It's what I was like, you're not gonna be in down dog for long because doing it in front of people is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, she, but she's gonna do it because she's a friend. Um, so she's in this posture called downward facing dog. And there are a couple of different things that we could look at here. When we talk about the sum of the forces, the net force that's acting on an object is actually what causes an object to move. If there's no net force acting, the object doesn't move. Um, so one thing that we do whenever we train as yoga teachers, in this posture, you're not gonna hold it for long, I promise. In this posture, <laughs> she's really pressing down through all of her finger pads because that allows her to take her hips up closer towards the ceiling. So one thing that we say that if you're in this posture and you're in this posture well, is that if I take my fingers and I try to pluck hers up, they don't move. She's really gripping down through all of her finger pads here. So based on the fact that her fingers don't move, the force that I'm using to try to move them does not exceed the force that she's using to press down. So she's able to keep all of her fingers on the mat on the fictitious mat that we did not break <laughs> because we came right from work. Um, so you can get out of that. That's Newton's second law. Newton's third law is the one that you're probably most familiar with. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Um, and for this one, I'm going to put her in a high plank, which is really rude. <laughs> really rude on my part. So in a high plank, there are a couple of things that I want to um, look at here. Go on your knees or first. I shouldn't hold her there for long. Whenever she's pressing down through her hands in general, the thing about Newton's third law says that the earth is pulling down on her and she is pulling back up on the earth. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So even me just standing here, earth pulls down on me, I pull back up on the earth. The earth doesn't move though because I'm tiny, it's big, right? Goes back to the second law. Um, so if we put her back in a high plank, what's interesting is high plank is easier for some folks than others just based on how your skeleton is actually formed. The really cool thing about yoga is that it's accessible to everyone and we say that no matter how you're shaped, literally, no matter how you're shaped, your skeleton is constructed, poses are accessible to you. She's built like Gumby, so she can do a lot of things. I love you and that is so true. So. <laughs> Here, what she's doing, she's pressing down through her finger pads again, and then there's the force from the floor back up that's allowing her to stay up. If we were to label where the force is on her body, go on your knees. If we were to label where the force is acting on her body, it's acting relatively at the center of mass and straight down. Go back up into your plane. Now, we want to talk about distribution of the force because that relates to the third law as well. If she takes her fingers really close together, the force isn't distributed well. If she spreads her fingers really far apart, anytime you're in something that looks like a plank, you want your fingers to be really far and wide apart, and she's really gripping again the floor through her finger pads, that helps to distribute the force. Go on your knees. One other thing that makes plank easier, come back up if you would. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> When we talk about the distribution of the forces again, if she takes her hands really close together as opposed to wider, that's a lot harder based on how the force is distributed. Now take them really wide. Now that force of the earth pulling down on her, and she's got an action back up as well, it's distributed now over a wider area, which also makes it easier to come out on these. That's the first part that I have for you, all related to Newton's third law and forces.
build their new ideas on the shoulders of giants, right? So we've got to cite these sources. So this next piece is called Cite Your Sources. We're going to have three scenes uh, going on up here. So let me start with getting some suggestions from you guys. Uh, let me get a location for these two. A gas station. Excellent. And um, then for these guys, let me get it like a, um, an event, an important event in life, like maybe like a wedding, yeah. a, a funeral, a funeral. All right. And, um, and then for these guys, a period in time, like maybe Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah. Renaissance. So let's review yeah. those you guys have. Gas station. Uh huh. Funeral. Yes. Alright, so how this works is the scenes are going to get going, and at one point, um, one of these players is going to be inspired by something that is going on in the other scene. They're going to clap their hands, and the next scene will begin using the last spoken line. And the next scene will begin using the last spoken line from the previous scene. I take you now to gas station. Okay, you have to fill up the car, you have to stop.
Sophie, it's over now for sure. I'd like to see you try. I'd like to see you try. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> of an occupation that three people might have together when they work at the same time. Doctor. Doctor. Suggestion? We have one minute. Begin. Put that leg down. Yes, yes, head resident. Put that arm up. I'm just glad that dating these symptoms and I think that they're going to die. <laughs> it's very like Meredith, it's a fucking cadaver. <laughs> Uh, I, I've always wanted to come here. To uh, 
article where there's like six people. Yeah, I just, I just hate people. So oh my God. my best friends, and then you know we would never have to go back to the real world ever again because you would love it here with me too. Mom, it's really weird when you call us your best friends. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is awkward. Like you should have friends your age. Like I don't know, my other friends have like wine moms they hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> My other friends go do fucking improv. <laughs> I mean, that's cool compared to this. <laughs> well, I don't do that. It's not just something I do. And, and you know, I just, I just thought that you guys were just so, so we're just so close. Oh. <laughs> oh, mom. What, if not, just come in for warmth at least, right? No. <laughs>
I'm not gonna make it home for Christmas. Max, are you serious? In fact, I'm a little bit worried, I think we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs>
that, I would make somebody else do that. But <laughs> if I think about how to do that, think about why it is you use, for example, a really long wrench when you do that. The reason why is because you're trying to create torque, which is again the rotational analog of force. You're applying some force to that wrench that then causes it to rotate to help you to remove those lug nuts. Now, torque depends on two things. It depends on the force that you apply and then the distance through which you apply it that is perpendicular to the force. So that's why you use, for example, a really long socket wrench. That's why um, older folks or folks with a potential lack of upper body strength, if you're trying to remove the lid of the jar of peanut butter and it won't come off, you put something over top of it, right? An additional dish rack, there's friction there too. Or they have those fancy like things for old people that help you just turn. It's got like handles, right? Um, that's to provide additional torque as well. So again, if we're talking about the rotational analog of force, I'm gonna show you a couple of different postures here. One other thing that I want to mention before we do that is that there's something called the moment of inertia for an object. And the best way I can describe that is it's how your mass is distributed with respect to the axis it rotates around. Um, so for example, if I'm, hello. <laughs> if we just have Dr. Brenda standing here again, if she spreads her arms out really wide, her moment of inertia is larger because more of her mass is further from the axis that she rotates around, which would be from the crown of her head down to the floor. If she brings her arms in really close, her moment of inertia is smaller because that mass comes in closer to her body. Um, so let's put her into some postures here, starting with airplane. Um, so airplane pose, whichever side you want. I'm not, I'm not looking. <laughs> you never close your eyes. What do you mean? You never close your eyes for like three seconds. <laughs> do you need a spot? Okay, so if we look at airplane pose, the deal here is where she's got her axis of rotation is about the leg that she's standing on, right? So she's going to rotate about this way. She's going to rotate about that leg that she's standing on. She's got mass on this side of her rotation axis. So that mass has a force that acts downward. She's got mass on this side of her rotation axis that also is going to have a force that acts downward, right? Each side of her body has weight that acts straight down. So what she's doing here in order to balance in this posture, she's arranging her body in such a way that the torques are balanced. There's no more torque on this side of her body than there is this side that allows her to stay balanced about this axis of rotation. Um, an additional posture that you can use today. Here we go. An additional posture that we can talk about when it comes to rotation is half moon. Whichever side you want. She's using a locked fun yoga tip that I'm just gonna throw in. Always use the props, right? So the water bottle here that is acting as her block helps bring the floor up closer. And it actually allows her to get more rotations. When we talk about rotation again, what we've got going on here is that she's rotating about a different plane of her body, right? She's a Pop-Tart in the toaster from this raised hand all the way down. Yeah, she is. From her raised hand all the way down to the floor. Um, so here when we talk about rotation, there's a couple of different things we can say. She wants to rotate her bottom chest muscle towards the sky. And what she does is utilize the muscle to create torque in order to do that. Any sort of rotation that happens is a consequence of torque. You can come out. Um, and the third posture that I have for her is triangle. She does not have to balance weirdly on this one. Side. So again, it's kind of the pop tart and the toaster idea, but there's a different torque that we can look at here. Take your hands straight out to the audience. So, no, the other one can sit down. Thank you. Um, so the torque that we can talk about here is she's got her hand reaching straight out to you. The torque that happens here can be about the shoulder joint. So she's going to utilize mostly her biceps and her traps in order to rotate this hand upward toward the sky. So again, out toward the audience. Another pivot of rotation. She's got all of this mass that has some moment of inertia. It's distributed with respect to the rotation axis. 
And now she's going to use biceps, triceps a little bit, and her traps to get this hand up towards the sky for a triangle pose. Um, so those are three different poses that involve torque. If we can go to the next slide. Dr. Brenda can stop moving now. And I'm just going to remind you, shameless plug, um, that the studio is the city's only nonprofit. Um, so anytime you come into Small World Yoga, all the money that you put in goes to putting outreach teachers out in the community. Um, what that means is we serve underserved populations. So I go out in the community, I teach at high schools, we're in prisons, we're in rehab centers, all of your local libraries probably have a Small World Yoga teacher there. Um, and any of those classes are free, so please come and join us at the studio. Not 
with this level. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think you're prepared for when I use my giant wrench and my tape dispenser together. This tape dispenser can wrap around the wrench and get centripetal motion like you've never fucking seen. <laughs> <laughs> Is it doing it by itself? Yeah. Oh. It's on Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the wrench is getting smaller and smaller because it's digging a hole to the center of the earth. Wow, it, must, it must be delayed Wi-Fi. Wow. Okay, we get it. You're both the best mechanics in the world. Can you fix my fucking car, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> Bradley, I need to talk to you. Reggie? Don't look at me. I'm sorry. Where should I look? Just not at me. I can't do this when you're looking at me. What, make a toast? <laughs> <laughs> it's a washed pot never boils, not a warm toast or never toast. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley! I'm listening, Gene. Hank, are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Can Hank look at you? No. Uh, Especially sorry, not Hank. Hank. Hank absolutely can't look at me. <laughs> when Hank said that he was going to stay for a little bit, I was totally fine. It's your brother. It's cool. Thanks, <laughs> Bradley. But I, I just am starting to feel kind of cramped at this point. And I think that you maybe... Cramped, I think you should try yoga. <laughs> I don't know how, but that's sexist. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit sexist, Bradley. I just was suggesting that. Shut up, Hank! <laughs> I was trying to help you, Gene. I think Hank needs to step out on his own and finally get his own apartment, okay? The divorce is finalized. <laughs> well, Hank has his own apartment. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is he doing here? He's been having bro time. <laughs>
forehanded.
Okay, it turns out we've caused an epidemic. <laughs> You're definitely going to jail. Kids across the nation are pop tarting uncontrolled. <laughs> the parents have started strudling about town. <laughs> They're snapping, crackling, and popping everywhere. <laughs>
Freddy Jr. <laughs> Freddy Jr. <laughs> I mean, you did pay as like a New Year's resolution thing. You did pay for like 25 classes and spend like $275. Why did we pay when there were free non-profit classes you could go to? Shameless <laughs> 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 Yeah, very. 